What's up guys? It is Sunday morning and I'm just uh, scanning Ibotta here to see if there are any dealios because I'm about to head into Walgreens and I thought I would film a video today of me just kind of going through Walgreens and uh, showing you guys my dermatologist favorite skincare products and uh, that sort of thing because you guys seem to like it and um, you know I want to spend a little bit more time in there than I usually do in a video dedicated to just that so stick around if it interests you I'm just looking here for Delia's we got two dollars cash back on Golden Garden organics never used it before we got a dollar back on uh, head and shoulders shampoo now that is a good one zinc pyrithione containing great for dandruff great for uh, seborrheic dermatitis great for tinea versicolor uh, lathered in affected area left on the skin in the shower for four to five minutes a uh, few nights a week and then rinsed off key ingredient zinc pyrithione um, so any anti-dandruff shampoo that contains that likewise any anti-dandruff shampoo any anti-dandruff shampoo that contains selenium sulfide is likewise helpful what else do we have here in Ibotta if you guys have never used Ibotta you totally should I have already my lifetime cash back on this bad boy um, is a, is like let's see let's just check my account lifetime two hundred and sixty dollars and eighty five cents and I have only been doing Ibotta since like like January it's basically like rebates on stuff in the grocery store and drugstore and the best deals I find are like the cash back on anything or just like 25 cents cash back you'd be surprised how quickly it adds up right alrighty and two dollars back on adult gummies that sounds suggestive adult gummies um I will pass on adult gummies I'll just stick to uh to straight gummy <laughs> although happy mama prenatal that sounds good I mean do you have to be pregnant to eat those they look like they're covered in sugar looks tasty uh, outside it is hot as stink but indoors it's always air conditioning city and I don't know I may not even edit this vlog too too much I might just uh, keep it freestyle so here we are good old Walgreens is this the same as Dwayne Reed yeah it is right <laughs> Dwayne Reed is a lot uh, more clever of a name I think okay starting off I just want to point out a great deal here different $13.99 uh, this is definitely a drugstore fave for acne. It's FDA approved for acne. I mean, a lot of you guys found me by virtue of my different tips video. This is a great one. Great deal. Um, I have not tried the balancing cleanser, guys. I know you all ask me about that. Um, I personally have not. Uh, but it uh, appears to be fine because it does not contain fragrance it does have uh, preservatives which you can become allergic to so the word hypoallergenic is just misleading in and of itself um, but the preservatives are good likewise the sodium lauryl sulfate is not a demon ingredient um, some people find that washes with sodium lauryl sulfate are extra drying but um, I think that this actually is probably a very good one, even though I have not personally tried it myself. Um, and you know what? It's a wash, so none of this stuff is going to physically stay on your face. So actually is low allergen potential in that regard. But this is a drugstore favorite as well, coming in at a... How much is this? They don't even say why well, you gotta do me like that. I think this is 10 bucks. Is the balancing moisturizer. I love this product. Um, I've used it myself and really, really love it. It is, in my mind, essentially identical to um, to the Neutrogena oil-free uh, moisturizer that I also love. It is fragrance-free. It does have avocado oil in it, which is um, fine in a moisturizer left on the skin. Um, could potentially, I guess, be an ingredient you might become allergic to. Just potentially. Um, if you have a problem with, like, fruits and things like that, um, irritation from that, I guess that could be a problem, but I personally have never seen any problems with this moisturizer and I like it a lot. Just 
boost it up too fast. Do you guys ever do that? You don't give your uh, vascular system enough time to uh, equilibrate? Okay. Drugstore favorite right here. Love this. This is Panoxyl. It really is dermatologist recommended. I'm telling you, I love this stuff. Um, this is a great body wash for your acne prone areas. Literally daily cleaning wash. It literally does everything it promises on here. Clocking in at a th mean $13.99 here at my uh, Walgreens, which is two. 0.17 per ounce um, and this will last quite a while this is four percent benzoyl peroxide uh, which is uh, generally well tolerated and in a wash form you leave it on the skin for a few minutes let it sit there and wash it off um, as a follow-up to that uh, there is no difference between this brand name Panoxyl um, and let's go over here and your drugstore brand. So this is another common question you guys ask me. Are uh, drugstore brands any better, worse? Are they safe? Yes, save yourself money. Um, so this Walgreens acne wash for foaming acne wash, 10%, is identical to Panoxol's acne foaming wash, 10%. Great for body prone areas. I really like this creamy one personally. I find it's really easy to tolerate. That's a great one. Okay, everybody loves to ask about these silly little things. And you know what? This just strips the top layer of your skin. It transiently makes your pores look fantastic and everybody's mesmerized by the little uh, keratin depressions that it, it, it traps and they think that they're cleansing their pores. Stop, just stop with the nonsense. Yeah, I mean, it transiently desiccates the top layer of your skin and makes everything look tight and shiny. So you're happy for about, what, 15 seconds? And while you're out of 11 bucks, um, yeah, I mean, if you're going to blow money on this nonsense, at least get the drugstore brand um, and save a few bucks. But uh, likewise, charcoal is another popular ingredient you all like to ask me about, um, you know, as if you're a barbecue. And uh, we don't usually tell people to go put in charcoal on their face, but it seems to be very well tolerated. It has a low allergy potential. Does it clear pores? Not really. Is it cleansing? Not really. Some people swear by it. It's completely anecdotal as far as uh, consumer opinion. But let's just check out this product by Biore. They're marketing it as charcoal. But really what this is, is a salicylic acid face wash. And it's got a ton of fragrance in it. Um, so <laughs> there's that. But it's a wash, so not intended to be left on the skin. So maybe the fragrance in this is not so bad for you, especially if you're not allergic to fragrance. But um, yeah, I mean, if you see any benefit from this, I would bank that it's the salicylic acid in this, no, not the charcoal. I have tried this self-heating mask before and it's a ton of fun. Um, self-heating, however, on the skin, there's no role for heating or cooling or any of that nonsense in the skin. If anything, it will make skin problems worse because you know what happens compensatorily? The little blood vessels that function to cool and heat, cool your skin when you get overheated help you uh, not overheat. They dilate, when they dilate, guess what happens? Your face gets red, and if you have rosacea, your face might stay red for quite a while, and that might bother you, so skip this kind of thing. But I have tried it, I did like it personally, but do I recommend this? No. Um, and <laughs> free your pores. You know what will free your pores? Taking your pore mirror and shattering it on the floor. That is what would free your pores, not this thing. Okay. Say you're irritated as stink by benzoyl peroxide in your acne prone areas on the body and you just don't like it. You don't like the fact that it could potentially bleach your washcloth. Fair enough. If you've got some heirloom washcloth you're bathing with, you may not want it bleached by benzoyl peroxide. So another good alternative is salicylic acid in a body wash, okay? And I happen to be a fan of this 
Aspexia brand that you can frequently find in Family Dollar. Um, they have the wash here at uh, Walgreens for $7.49. Um, this contains 1.86% salicylic acid. Both salicylic acid and benzoyl peroxide in wash forms are effective in wash forms for acne and lightly exfoliating the skin. They very quickly penetrate the oil bearing surfaces of the skin and help to break up the little bridges between skin cells that help to lightly exfoliate and, you know, unclog pores. All right, here we are. You guys asked me about sulfur in skincare. Sulfur is great for acne, rosacea, redness on the skin, inflammation. And this is a product I happen to be a huge fan of. This is Acne Freeze uh, Therapeutic Sulfur Mask. It contains 3.5% sulfur. And this is, a, you know, like most things, gently massage onto the surface of the skin for a few minutes and then, you know, rinse it off. Got the AC cranked on and up in, up in here, up in here, okay. I just feel a little cooler with the hood on. This also has zinc in it. Zinc applied to the skin, great anti-inflammatory. I mentioned in the car when I was running through the eye bottle list that zinc pyrithione is great for seborrheic dermatitis and dandruff um, and kind of calming down the redness of both of those conditions. Um, and wouldn't you know, it's in this acne-free wash. This, guys, this, guys, is uh, also uh, free of fragrance, so this is a good one. I also get a fair number of questions about Clearasil. Clearasil is a great product as well. It's a 2% salicylic acid wash, which uh, when applied to the skin, like I said, can be very, very helpful. So I do like Clearasil a lot, but like I said, the Walgreens brand is equally efficacious, clocking in at $7.99 versus Clearasil Ultra is $10.49. So be aware of that. There's no difference between the two. Um, unfortunately, they both contain fragrance, uh, which can be problematic. Oh no, back the bus up. Oh yeah, they do contain fragrance. Most, a lot of acne washes contain fragrance because they smell a little unappealing. Oxy. Doesn't this sound intense? I'm an oxygenized. No oxygen on the face is just, stop these oxygenating masks, okay? I mean like, it's a marketing thing. Benzoyl peroxide helps kill bacteria on the skin by interfering with oxygen metabolism. But just skip the oxygen facial nonsense. It's, it's not real, it's not real. Um, okay, so oxy acne medication. This is 10% 10, 10 benzoyl peroxide wash. Okay, what I want you to be informed about is the active ingredient, okay? It's not about this, it's about this, okay? Benzoyl peroxide, what percent? Does it say medication on the top or is it just a list at the bottom of the ingredients, okay? Benzoyl peroxide is your active ingredient in these. Uh, you know, if you choose to spend more money on a brand name, that's your choice. Just know that the active ingredient is no different. Let's talk about this. A minute. Guys, have you all seen this? Never tried it myself, but this is for the tough to reach areas on the back, like uh, in areas that are prone to break out. It's a salicylic acid uh, spray. It's got witch hazel on it, which can be helpful in calming some of the uh, redness of acne. Love that. And, um, how is it supposed to be used? On skin. Why do entire effective area? Where, where I see this being problematic, however, is that it's left on the skin. That's a problem. Talosilic acid doesn't necessarily need to sit on there. It can, it's fine, but you're going to get a lot more irritation when it sits on the skin than when you just use use it in a wash form. You guys know I love my color, my orange, uh, my orange wash, okay? This is a 2% salicylic acid face wash. Again, active ingredient, salicylic acid, says acne medication on it. Walgreens brand, Neutrogena, no difference. They both contain fragrance, which can be problematic. Um, so there's that. 
Let's get out of the acne section. All right, so we're over here in sunscreens, my other favorite section, and I do really like as far as you, as far as American uh, chemical sunscreens for the face, I think Neutrogena does a really good job uh, with their chemical sunscreens. And the addition of Helioplex supposedly sta stabilizes some of our chemical filters, which are not as jazzy as you European and Japanese folks have. But we do our best, and they do uh, provide good uh, broad coverage spectrum. I personally am a fan of this Neutrogena Clear Face. Um, I've used this before and love it on myself. Uh, what's the difference between 30 and 55? Well, you're not very good at putting sunscreen on. That's that's true. What, whether you wanted to believe it or not, I'm not very good at it in terms of evenness. So you know what? If you're using 55, you're more likely to be somewhere in the 30 ballpark. Whereas if you're using 30, you may be somewhere more in the 15. That's why we recommend 30 to 55 because anything over 15 is actually fine. But nobody puts 15 on, right? So we're not going to recommend that because you're probably at a too with, with SPF 15. Um, okay, here in the U.S. there is no reason to spend your money on La Roche Posse unless you just happen to love it and continue to apply it. But clocking in at 34 bucks with a weak SPF of 15, this really doesn't offer anything. And if you're irritated by Ava Benzone, which some people can be sensitive to it, this is going to bother you. Now moving on to their mineral sunscreen, clocking in at a mean $33.50. I mean, you guys say Elt is expensive. Elt is what, 24 bucks? This is pricey as pricey can be at $33.50. That's 19.71 cents per ounce. If you're applying this properly, you're going to buzz through this right quick. And unless you are, I don't know, a billionaire, that's a lot of money to spend on La Roche Posse. Yes, I know it's La Roche Posay, but isn't Posse a lot more fun to say? Okay. What I like about these mineral sunscreens, as I've mentioned before, is that uh, they're fantastic for both UVA, UVB. The titanium and zinc dioxide, once they're on, they're doing their thing. They don't degrade. You do need to reapply them because you know what? You sweat and the sweat causes the sunscreen to fall off. So you've got to reapply regardless of the claims, even the ones that claim that they can be left on and only applied once. That is a lie. Do not believe it. Reapply, reapply, and don a broad brimmed hat because this ain't going to keep your skin. 100% protected regardless of where you live, what sunscreen you're using, or what it claims to do. It's only an added measure. It's not enough on its own. Okay, but moving right along, what I like about these mineral sunscreens, particularly um, like, for example, this one that has the tint, is actually in the inactive ingredients. If you pan scan down, you will see an ingredient called iron oxide in here somewhere. Where you at? Where you at? Um, iron oxide, guys, has been shown to help provide a little bit of protection against visible light. That is the light that you see. You don't see ultraviolet light. You see visible light. And visible light can actually contribute subtly and slightly to dark spots and post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation as well as melasma. So using a mineral sunscreen with uh, zinc oxide in it and uh, iron oxide can be very helpful in that regard. But I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't spend thirty three dollars and fifty cents on it. Uh, I wish CeraVe had a mineral tinted sunscreen, but CeraVe has fantastic sunscreens. In fact, I am biased to the CeraVe ones. Uh, I have not tried the Aquation brand, I believe, uh, but I'm sure that that is likewise good. It is a uh, more affordable generic version of CeraVe, I am told. Um, but why I like CeraVe is that it's got ceramides in it, which uh, are, I've mentioned on here before, and I encourage you to check out my moisturizer Q&A, so I don't have to review it again. But they're great in skincare and in moisturizers. It also has niacinamide in it, which can be helpful for calming the uh, redness related to either rosacea or just inflammation in the skin in general great in that regard. These are mineral sunscreens here. Yes, guys, the jazzy word mineral really just means zinc and or titanium dioxide. A lot of people don't like these sunscreens. They're really uh, white and casty, to be honest. They're really white and casty. People of color, these sunscreens are going to be a challenge for you in that regard. So, you know what? What I like better, what is also very, very good and that I enjoy using myself but is not over here, 
is the CeraVe AM sunscreen. It's an AM moisturizer that is a combination sunscreen. It contains zinc and a few chemical filters that are pretty well tolerated and do not cause a lot of irritation and blend well into the skin and don't leave the cast. The titanium dioxide component is the is the bugaboo with the cast. All right, so this is what was on Ibotta, is this Goddess Garden Organic Sunscreen. I have not tried it, but I believe it's cruelty-free, so I'm always looking for a cruelty-free option that doesn't contain a ton of fragrance. Oh, look, lavender oil, fragranced as fragrance can be. Let's check out this facial one, SPF 30 Natural Sunscreen. All right. Zinc oxide, yeah, that's great. This is this this is great sun protection wise. Problematic ingredients, however, are the lavender oil. You don't want to leave lavender on your face. You don't want to leave essential oils on your face and then go out in the sun because the essential oils are not stable. They can degrade, and when they degrade, they can form highly allergenic substances and potentially cause bad rashes. All right, so I get a lot of questions about this light mask for acne that Neutrogena makes and likewise other brands make. So blue light and red light, both are helpful for acne. Light can be helpful. Blue light and red light can be helpful. However, those devices are not regulated and their outputs are incredibly variable and for the most part, they don't reach the output, output wattage or wavelengths necessary to do anything, so. If you want to do blue or red light for a skin problem, go to a dermatologist's office and get it done right, rather than plunking down 33 bucks on some glorified flashlight. Let's just talk for a moment about what I consider the holy grail of skincare, what I consider medical grade skincare, what, what is awesome. Is this brand Vanny Cream? Yeah, I actually recommend this. I freaking love Vanny Cream for a variety of reasons. Nobody's gonna develop, it'd be very, very unlikely for anybody to develop an allergy to Vanny Cream because it doesn't have the most common allergens in them, which would be fragrance, parabens, formaldehyde, lanolin, and masking fragrance. Masking fragrance is the bugaboo. That, you guys, is, um, fragrance is a clever thing that they add to unscented products. Okay, so be careful. Unscented is not fragrance free. Unscented has a fragrance added to it to hide, to mask the fragrance. Okay, so it is a trick and you can still have problems with it. So always look for fragrance free. Okay, but Vanny Cream is my holy grail skincare brand, hands down, far and away. The Gentle Cleanser is fantastic if you have rosacea, if you have dry skin, sensitive skin, allergy prone skin, acne prone skin. skin human skin likes, th this is good. This is, this is good, okay? It's not drying. Follow it up with the moisturizer though. This is a good one to follow it up with the light lotion. This is a great face moisturizer. If it's the AM, they have an SPF 30 for the face that is good. This is the 50. It's a little thick. You may want to use it on the body. I wish they had a good combination sunscreen. The darker skin types would find more blendable, but as far as I know, they don't. They do, however, have a deodorant, an antiperspirant. If you miss my antiperspirant uh, sweatiness uh, Q&A, check that out. But they have my holy grail deodorant. This, I'm somebody who suffers from eczema, guys, like, like real deal Holyfield eczema. This saved my life. This right here, Vanny Cream, this tub, this tub, you keep it on the edge of your tub. You keep the tub on your tub. And when you get out of the shower and the skin is wet and you're in the shower but you haven't quite pulled back the drawer, you can slather this all over your skin. Thank you. Put it on the wet skin, let it sink in to the wet skin, and don't go towel drying it off. Don't go wiping off the moisture. This seals the water into the skin, keeps it hydrated. Men and women. This is not just for women. Men folk too, all right? You have an, an organ system. Skin is an organ system, okay? It's not just a beauty system. Speaking of good sunscreens for the face that are mambo combos, love the Eucerin one. Daily Protection SPF 30. This is a fantastic one. It is very moisturizing. It does blend in very well, and I happen to love it. All right, speaking of things um, targeting skin of color, 
uh, like combination sunscreens, which I think are a good choice because they blend in well. Hello, Doc, the smile friend. This is the Ambi Fade Cream. This has hydroquinone. It's safe to use, but it can cause two um, potential problems. One is irritation, and when your skin gets irritated and you go out in the sun, guess what ain't fading? The dark spots on your face. But uh, it can also rarely, when used, especially at high, high concentrations, as is found in a lot of uh, skincare bleaching creams in Asia, so be careful. Uh, it can cause something called pseudoochronosis, which is an incredibly disfiguring discoloration on the face that is permanent. Likewise, porcelain is another good one. I mean, it's the active ingredient, 2% hydroquinone. It doesn't matter if it's Ambi, it doesn't matter if it's porcelain. They all kind of smell funky in my opinion, but that's just me. One that I don't like, and here's the discrepancy on this channel. You guys who, who have watched a few of my videos may be confused, like, why does she hate Cetaphil? I get that question a lot. I don't hate Cetaphil. I just hate their face wash, okay? It doesn't do anything. It does not take off your makeup. So why else are you washing your face but to remove dirt? Makeup is essentially exogenous dirt that we willingly put on our face. And this does not take it off. You have to scrub, scrub, scrub. And as you're scrub, scrub, scrubbing and that makeup's not coming off, your face is getting red and irritated and inflamed. I do not like this for that reason. Um, however, Cetaphil does have a product that I am a huge fan of, however it is not housed over here and I don't know if they carry it at this Walgreens, but it is something called Restore Derm. I will link it down below. That is a great, great body cream for dry skin. The other, oh, here's a good one. It's not the Restore Derm. They don't have the Restore Derm here, but they have the their moisturizing cream. This is a good one. Fragrance free. I like it. It does not have ceramides. This, this is my, this is another holy grail moisturizer for the body. This is for the body. Some people like putting it on their face and don't have any problems with it. Uh, so give it a whirl there and let me know how it goes for you. I don't put it on my face, but my mother does. Um, so yeah, but this is also fragrance free and is a, uh, is a, uh, another Holy Grail Ride or Die product. Now, one La Roche-Posay thing now that we're over here that I like is actually this Double Repair Moisturizer. I have tested this out on myself and I really like it. It is a sp an expensive, bougie version of CeraVe PM. Fragrance-free, oil-free, I like it. Um, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, it's nice, it feels good, and um, if I were gonna buy um, La Roche-Posay products for myself, I would buy this. I've also tried this, and I really like it a lot. I guess $15 is not too bad. Um, so this and their Double Repair Moisturizer are both really good. Those are so far wins. Um, their Effaclair Duo I keep a uh, in my travel bag, and I gotta say, I actually don't really like it that much. I find that it's... I don't know, I just, it, it feels, it doesn't feel good going on. Um, but as far as the ingredients, it's fine. Um, this is a good one. Uh, I don't buy it for myself because the active ingredient is 5.5 benzoyl peroxide and then it's what is, you know, in zaps it for like a sixteenth of a part of the price. So, moving right along. All right. So far, I just believe that my cellar waters are complete waste. I have yet to find one that is like useful at all. So, uh, I hear good things about this La Roche Posse one. I guess 20 bucks isn't a lot, but I mean, then again, we're just talking about uh, water in a bottle. So, if that's how you want to spend your money, go for it. But what does this have in it? It claims it's good for sensitive skin, so maybe it doesn't have any fragrance. Let's just look here. Anybody read Greek? It's all Greek to me. <laughs> Oh look, fragrance. Yeah, right. Total lie. That is not good for sensitive skin. All right, $37 for an eye cream. Why? Why? Why world? So I would not spend $37 on this tiny tube of whatever it's claiming. It's good though that it is uh, fragrance free, paraben free. Um, so if you only have dry eyes and don't want to moisturize the rest of your face, I guess you could plunk down $37 on this, but I mean, honestly, I would, instead of buying this, I would buy 
I would buy this. I mean, they're basically the same. And for whatever reason, this is 20 bucks and it's a bigger tube. So I would just buy this and you could put this around your eyes. So there's that. I kind of feel like I need a snack now. I've been talking to myself for so long. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. I'm going to conclude it here. Comment below on some of your favorite drugstore skincare products. Um, give this video a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.